Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 3 bringing you another exhibition match stream. Starting up today, we're gonna have Aquanim and One Cut going at it on Aquatic Divide. So, we've seen One Cut before. He's currently going for Kaligabut Factory. Seen him a few times in the last few days, but I've never casted Aquanim. Not sure what he's like, not sure what he's gonna do. He is playing Cloaky as well, which on this map isn't a huge surprise, though. Wouldn't be surprised if someone went Amphib as well, actually, given the whole side water thing here. But, Cloaky makes a lot of sense. Cloaky, or... Actually, last time I casted this map was a 2v2. It was like, spiders and shields versus spiders and gunships or something like that. And, at this point, I'm not sure what to expect in this map. Not played a whole lot, but last time I played a 1v1, it was Cloaky on Cloaky. So, no surprises there. I mean, one cut going for quick... Just, Glaive... Looked like it was for scouting, but I didn't actually use it for that. While... A Conjurer being used to reclaim. should point out this map does have a lot of reclaim. Lots and lots of rocks, you can see. In each base, there's... I don't know, I can't even tell. Yeah, there's about, like, 900 metal in a base of just reclaim. For reference, that's going to be enough to... That's, like, 90 seconds worth of the standard economy that they have now in the base. Or... How do you put it another way in terms of the number of mexes? Think about that, but anyway, that is a lot of metal. Now that's basically an extra... Yeah, it's another 90 seconds of essentially doubling their income at this point. Now, One Cut is getting attacked by Oakenim. He's actually keeping all his glaze at home. One Cut is not... Go he's not being very aggressive, while Aquanim is being extremely aggressive and attacking along the side, hitting one of the Conjurers, or will be hitting one of the Conjurers. It's hard to tell, though, if One Cut's going to be able to get out of this. It looks like he will be able to successfully defend with a defender appropriately named, of course, and that being said, that Glaive will be able to get off one of the Metal Extractors and probably one of the Wind Generators as well, and down it goes, another Wind Generator, not quite gone down, but still, bit of a blow, so one cut down at 9 to 14 Metal, Aquim also reclaiming as well, so both players do have the reclaim, so for a brief period that will be able to kind of even out, but even then, one cut has no Metal Extractors, in fact, all he was relying on was reclaim, didn't even get these last two metal extractors in his base. They, he's going to get them now. But well, Aquanim, ready for another attack if one cut goes out. But it looks like one cut realizes this could happen. Or actually, he well, it doesn't matter now. He does in fact see it. So Aquanim able to get rid of one. Sorry, one cut able to get rid of Aquanim's forces. Aquanim is continuing to build up in his base though and getting counterated, but to no avail. One cut not able to do too much, and Aquanim ceases production. Looks like he's. He might have just forgotten about it. I don't think he... It doesn't look like he's actually building up anything else that would use up all the resources. In fact, he's starting to flood metal. And one cut as well. Neither player... Okay, one cut I can kind of see since his economy is a little bit less certain. But Aquim, why was he not building anything? Why is he still not building anything? Okay, now he's building more glaives. But that looked like an oversight. I mean, I see that a fair amount. Players really don't use repeat build often enough. And there's very little reason, unless you're building something very quickly, unless you're trying to get the early economy up that much faster. It's generally not worth not using repeat queue once you get a solid 10 metal per second. Especially a solid 15 metal per second. Anyway, Aquanim and One Cut just laying out their front lines. The north side is completely open. The northeast ran, or northeast choke point, fairly open. The southwest choke point is well defended by Aquanim. The One Cut is going for it. He's not actually going for the northeast, even though there was nothing there in the way. But luring on Aquanim's forces, getting rid of one of the glaives right off the bat. Taking a bit of damage, but ultimately able to kill a glaive. That was definitely worth it. The damage has been healed up, and... One cut, dodging and weaving around Aquanim's forces, and gets around the back, both... Through both choke points. The northeast gets in there first, but the southwest loses one glaive, but the rest of the glaives able to just run past. They will run into some opposition, but... The two glaives in the north will find nothing in their way except for a defender. That will kill one of them, but the other one should get through, no problem, and then get rid of the Conjurer. Or actually, no! One of the missiles hits the Conjurer instead! Kill, still kills one of the Glaives, but... That Glaive, unfortunately, go into a Metal Extractor that is not being taken. Well, One Cut... Moving the rest of his Glaives out of the way, just getting them... Just trying to avoid getting attacked. And his last Glaive just getting off the hill. In fact, why is he continuing to attack? He's not in the best spot to do so. He has been luring around Aquan's forces decently well. And he's following up with a couple words. He's not actually building up a whole lot on top of this, though. Even though One Cut actually does have now a slight metal advantage, his power is getting low, and he has no real production going in. And he has just about lost all of his glaives, having to retreat now. 
His last glaive able to get out of there, getting out of Aquanim's territory, but still Aquanim is ahead very slightly. By one glaive, if this warrior gets into position, then those glaives would go down no problem. The warrior actually should go into the choke point. Because at that stage, there'd be no easy way to get through. But looks like Aquanim going with the scythe did not see that coming. Completely missed that. Must have thought that was a conjurer when I spotted it earlier. Yeah, there is a scythe coming in here that Aquanim has, which will actually not do a whole lot of... No, it will! Nice! Nice double backing there with the scythe. I'm gonna go around probably get rid of the solar collector. Probably gonna hit the solar collector first, and that'll reveal it. Yep, there it goes. Gonna reveal... Get, it reveals the conjurer, though. We should be able to get rid of that. One guy trying to run away with a conjurer, but... Actually, he's gonna be successful. Or no, never mind. Running back into the scythe. That conjurer's dead. Down it goes, but so does the scythe. The glaives do manage to finish it off. Not a great harassment, honestly. That really wasn't totally worth it. I think... Yeah, 250 metal out for 75. It's a metal extractor, but one cut of this one actually has... He's floating everything. He's not producing enough, and he needs caretakers as well. Getting a caretaker in his main base. He's still flooding metal, but... He's not reclaiming into that flood, so at least that's a, not so bad. Well, Aquanim running a bunch of glaives into the warrior. This is actually enough glaives to deal with the warrior if they all attack at once, but the warrior is able to just get them in small groups, finishing all of them off. And attacking in the northeast as well, so Aqu one cut is attacking along both fronts. And Aquanim pretty heavily on the defensive. No surprise given they went heavily for glaives. Probably gonna get rock- No! Getting sharpshooters! I guess he's probably going to get Rocco's, but apparently that's not to be. Instead, he's going for the Sharpshooters. And... Actually, that's not a bad idea. That will get rid of the... That'll get rid of the Warriors in one shot each. Once the Glaives get wise to it, it's not going to be easy. But the thing is, there's enough Glaives, I think, that Aquinum should be able to cover... Basically, Suppressing Fire on that Sharpshooter. Make sure the Sharpshooter doesn't get hit by any of the Glaives coming in. And the Glaives getting past the Warrior! That's going to be huge! Now, one cut at the same time is attacking to the north. He should be able to get rid of this force. The sniper has been completed. It is out. No, there it is. The one sharpshooter has been built up, and this warrior could actually go up, deal with the base directly. But at the same time, we do have Aquinum's forces coming around the back, not ultimately doing a whole lot of damage. Dealing with a... No, not even dealing with that much. It didn't do much, honestly. A couple Rocco's in the back as well. It looks like it was a bit of a distraction. However, not very much. One cut still attacking to the northeast. He still has... Okay, looks like three glaives, three Rocco's, and... No, three glaives, two Rocco's, Conjurer, and a Warrior. The Conjurer just going for reclaim. Not a bad idea. One cut actually is behind an economy at the moment. He has fewer resource... Pro fewer metal extractors. Probably game I was casting for a second. Fewer metal extractors, and he has to deal with that. Although, admittedly, he is reclaiming power. That... That's not the best option. Gotta be honest, he should be getting more metal extractors or reclaiming more metal. There's quite a few metal extractors in the front of his base, although... The only ones that would really be useful are here and here. Aquanum has taken some of the front metal extractors, trying to get Overdrive to supplement them, and he is attacking in with the Glaives! Should have pointed this out, he was actually attacking pretty hard. Getting rid of the Warrior at the same time. Southwest Assault with Warrior and a couple Glaives. And that Sharpshooter will defend it. Actually, that is still the only Sharpshooter. Aquanum only has one Sharpshooter. Gets rid of One Cut's radar. One Cut right now is able to see the Glaives coming in and does have line of sight of... Well, now he knows the Sharpshooter's in there. He knows that's a thing. How he deals with that, we will soon find out. But I think he's probably just going to continue pushing Rocco's and Warriors. I don't think he's going to either go for Sharpshooter's of his own. I would think you know, Glaives wouldn't be a bad idea, or even actually a racer on top of that would be just weird. The problem, of course, with the Sharpshooter... The t tricky part with Sharpshooter is trying to deal with it because it is cloaked. One Cut... Has upgraded his commander, however, and looks like he's pushing forward with it. Rocket launcher, shield, and auto repair with extra range. Same time, Aquanim has... Yeah, he's pushing over his commander somewhere. Aquanim has his commander on the map, but frankly, he clearly doesn't care very much about it. It was a support comm anyway. Not the most important of commanders for frontline engagements. Ah, here it is. Yeah, not even upgraded. He does not care about upgrading that one, which makes no surprise. There's no surprise. Makes perfect sense. One Cut does, however, have a battle comm, which is a frontline comm. That's what you use it for. I just point out there is a Glaive on the east side of the map. Getting attacked by Rocco, which actually is going to attack the Rocco. We'll be able to tear it apart, too. The Rocco will be at one shot up, and that Glaive dodges it. 
because that's what glaives do. In fact, I think the glaive is just... Oh, no, that was not being paid attention to. Nope, that was just happening naturally. Aquanim is... Oh, he's moving a sharpshooter into the south side of the map. Is he trying to attack the... Oh, what is he attacking directly? He's probably attacking the commander or maybe the base directly. I don't know exactly what he's doing with this. Probably was trying to find some good targets to work with, but he doesn't know what they are. Doesn't know where they are. He, doesn't, he knows the commander is down here. So if he goes there, that wouldn't be a bad idea. And he knows where the for enemy forces are where he'd be worried about getting a sharpshooter reveal. But no, he's not attacking forward with it, surprisingly enough. Nor is he defending with it, which is also kind of surprising. So right now, one cut... He's basically f needs more glaives at this point. <laughs> needs more glaives to be able to deal with the Rockos. The Rockos are not going to be able to... Okay, nice shot there with the radar tower. But yeah, the Rockos cannot go down easily to other Rockos, and definitely not to the Warriors. You need to get, deal with them with glaives, and the Sharpshooter is coming in. Has... No, never mind. Scythes are coming in, not Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter is still at the front. Lines. And that actually has, has done some damage. But the Scythe here, that's what's dealing... Well, that's what will be dealing a lot of damage once one cut takes this metal extractor and Aquanim at this point. My goodness, how is he getting so much metal? Got some reclaim. Does he have any reclaim? He has a bit of overdrive. But that's only getting him to 2.5 per. 30 metal total, that's... Well, he must be reclaiming around here. I don't... Oh, never mind. His commander's reclaiming. That's what's going on. His commander actually has... Yeah, 17 build power. Okay, that explains a lot. However, in terms of metal extractors, they are fairly even, but the scythe is being left idle. It's not actually attacking, surprisingly enough. I think he's waiting for one cut to be finished, the metal extractor, and then he's going to attack. Ten seconds, that'll come in. But it's going to have a... I think it's a pretty powerful effect. It looks like Aquanim is trying to get rid of the commander. Obviously, he's going to be trying to do so. That is a wise idea, if he can. Sharpshooter is... It's further back, getting repaired, not dealing with the commander directly, which actually might be problematic. The Rockos are doing what they can, but honestly, he's just losing it quickly. And down, there we go, there's the Scythe. Scythe gets rid of the Metal Extractor that has been fully constructed and gets rid of the Conjurer. That was when he wanted to do it, and he managed to pull it off, so Aquanim misses with the Sniper, or misses the Sharpshooter on One Cut's commander. So the Sharpshooter, it's revealed that it's around here, and at the same time, we do have the Air Switch. I should have pointed that out earlier. The airplane plant has been built for a while, but there was nothing actually being built out of it. Raven is now coming along, and the sharpshooter able to get some shots in. One cut, getting his commander surrounded and about to go down. Not even trying to retreat very hard, and down it goes to the Rockos. I think at this point, Aquan is just going to move him for the kill, and not necessary. One cut surrenders. GG. We also have another game after this, but yeah, that, was, that wasn't bad. Bit surprised I haven't seen Aquaman before. I'm going to double check that that name is not a alias. Because oftentimes players will change their names. No! Aquanim is his only name. First login 21 days ago. Okay, that actually might be a smurf. Nope. No no reported smurf. So yeah. Aquanim apparently is just a newish player started playing a month ago. It was actually pretty good. Okay, if someone knows who they are, that would be great. Anyway. I will be back with another game in just a moment. It will be a game between Rymark and Marlowe. Should be interesting. So I'm to be on Frozen Planet. Stay tuned for that.